In this video, I'd like to talk about the validity of the Formula 4 leadership decision-making model. And it might help as you listen to this video to have a copy of the decision-making model in front of you with the four styles and the eight sub-styles, but also the leader orientation model as well. You'll find on the same, in the same place on the Formula 4 website um, an opportunity to print the tenets and principles that underpin this approach. You see, this is a principle-driven approach. There are a set of principles that gear the questions we recommend people ask of themselves so that they gear the approach to the way in which they've answered those questions. And in fact, with the Leadership Judgment Assessor and the Coach on the Desktop, uh, you can experience being asked those questions and you can experience how the software will then recommend on the basis of your thinking which style to choose. It's only with the Leadership Judgment Assessor you're asked to assert right at the very beginning on each occasion, this is a good example of me being, say, directive or consultative or consensual and delegative. The software then probes you about that, asking you questions on the basis of those principles and then suggests that on the basis of that thinking, this style or that style actually is the one that seems to be, seems to reflect the way in which you're thinking about it. Now we looked at 760 uh, scenarios that people had put through the Leadership Judgment Assessor. And in every instance, after they'd been through the decision tree and the software had suggested that, say, the directive, consultative, consensual or delegative approach uh, was most appropriate, they were asked, do you think that's appropriate? How appropriate or inappropriate? And you know what? On 66% of occasions, people rated the outcome as highly appropriate or appropriate. On only 17% of occasions did they say it was inappropriate or totally inappropriate. In fact, on only 7, 7 out of the 760 occasions did they say the output uh, was totally inappropriate. Now, you know, that finding, 66% agreement, is very much in keeping with what Victor Vroom found when he also used um, this approach. You see, we've built upon very firm foundations. We've built upon Victor Vroom uh, and his um, impressive research. So this doesn't surprise us. But our evidence goes further. With the LJA then you have to assert in the beginning this is a good example of me being say directive and then you're, you're asked questions and the software tells you whether or not your thinking suggests that that is a good example of a directive decision-making approach. Well how about if we award two points in those circumstances where there's a direct match but we award one point where, if you look at the leader orientation model, we find the person's thinking as suggested by the way in which they've moved through the software is more consultative or delegative. Now that's still in keeping with the leader orientation model, so we'll give them one point. We only give zero points if the outcome is consensual. Now what we find is that when we look at the, um, the pattern of scores across those 760 scenarios, on 51% of occasions people are scoring two points. On 40% of occasions people score one point. So on 91% of occasions people are thinking in accordance with the leader orientation model. And on only 9% of occasions, I think it's 9.2% of occasions, do we find that 
um, they're scoring zero points. You know, when we look at that evidence and we look back at what Victor Vroom was saying about the validity of the approach, when we think about the evidence that we report in our leadership judgment indicator manuals, where you can see the uh, leader orientation model, the decision making model, validated uh, by the patterns of scoring of people when they're rating um, the various options um, according to what they believe is their merit uh, given the scenarios they're confronted with, that then their rating behaviour again is reflected in um, what we see in those models. There, we therefore have enormous confidence in those models as we offer them to you as a way of thinking, as a way of construing leadership decision-making situations. And what we also know is that when people like um, the United States Department of Defense um, look across the many and varied leadership models that there are, uh, it will be perhaps of no surprise to you to learn that they've communicated to us, or at least one of their authors has communicated to us, that our model had the greatest elegance, simplicity, and seemingly to them, uh, validity, as far as uh, use within the combined services were concerned. So we have no hesitation in suggesting to you uh, in communicating our confidence in this model, uh, in both its forms, in the knowledge and hope that you can use it to good effect in helping your leaders lead more successfully as they work with and through their reporting colleagues. Well, thanks for listening.